first what? two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, as if I'm some big person to remind him. I never remind him. One time I'm wearing it today, I'm like, <laughs> trying to remind everybody, please wear yours. And it's going to be people that we all know. Yeah. Oh, five or six. This is not a
Good morning. Good morning. Our worship today continues in the worship bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave to your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Please join me in saying the psalm responsively by half verse. O Lord, our governor, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers. The moon and the stars with set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. The all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea. And the of the in the of the sea. O Lord, our governor. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today on this first Sunday after Christmas, we observe a feast day in the church called the Holy Name. And we don't usually celebrate this day on a Sunday, but since Christmas landed this year on a Sunday, and the holy name is always eight days after Christmas Day, we get to observe it today. And this day originates from the tradition in Jesus' time in which the law of Moses required that every male child be circumcised on the eighth day from his birth. And it had long been the custom to make it a festive occasion when family and friends came together to witness the naming of the child. So as we hear, the Gospel according to Luke records that eight days after his birth, a child was circumcised and given the name Jesus. And the name Jesus means Savior or Deliverer in Hebrew. And Luke says that this was the name given by the angel before he was even conceived in the womb. So he was given the name Jesus, Savior, Deliverer, and was known in God's heart and beloved by God and one with God before he came into the world. And of course, we also know Jesus by many other names in scripture, with which further reinforce his godly identity. We hear him called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, Rabbi, Teacher, Son of God, Messiah, Shepherd, Redeemer, King, and more. And all of these names are important because they describe who Jesus is and what he does, and they're all given to him by God and reveal his true identity, reminding us that his name and names and all names are important. So today on this Feast of the Holy Name, I invite us to think about names, our names, and from where we received them and how we too might have different kinds of names. The first that we might consider is our proper name the name that many of us were given before we were born, perhaps, but probably not given to us by God or an angel, but maybe so. Most likely our name was given to us by our parents, and many of us still use this name today. I see some people chuckling. If your name was given to you by God or an angel, I would love to hear that story (laughs) after church at coffee hour. Um, And your name that you use today may be lovely and beautiful, but unlike Jesus' name, it does not maybe define us like Jesus' name because it wasn't given to us by God, but by mortals. And some of us may not even like our name or we don't use the name that we were given at birth for a number of reasons, because our name isn't quite the same as God's name. And I would bet that maybe a few of us, but not all of us, equate who we are at our deepest level 
our deepest sense of who we are with our given name. Maybe we do and maybe you do, and if that's so, I would say you're lucky, and maybe there's a great story and lots of grace behind your given name. But even if that's not the case for us, I would remind us that like Jesus, each of us is known by God and created by God and beloved by God and named by God too before our creation and our birth. God may not name us with proper names, but with names like beloved, child of God, human, woman, man, teacher, sister, parent, brother, mother, father, artist, friend. And often the names that God gives us, the names that maybe are not used as much as our given name, reflect who we really are. They reflect who God calls us to be and creates us to be, And maybe these names overlap with our calling and our growing into the fullest sense of ourselves and who we're called to be. And they're good. And we can contrast these names, the ones given to us by God that reflect our true identity, with some of the names that the world gives us, or maybe even labels that the world gives us. Each of us probably has been subject to labeling and maybe stereotyping categorization. And being subject to these is often insulting and disempowering and not of God. Sometimes we might be labeled as other or with a derogatory word or as lesser or unworthy or ugly, whatever the label. And maybe even words or labels or names that we assign to ourselves in our own minds. And when we do, we experience desolation. When we are labeled with words that do not reflect who God created us to be, we can feel confusion and even despair. And sometimes these names and labels drown out the names that God gives us. So sometimes we believe that we are only what the world says we are, and often that is not much. So it's important to remember that any label or name or artificial standard that conflicts or creates dissonance with or drowns out who we are or who we identify to be or with who God calls us to be as a name that we do not need to carry, a name that we do not need to embrace. But we can embrace the ones that God gives us. So as I mentioned before, names are important and they are powerful because at their best, they can help build us up and empower us and at their worst, they can harm and disempower us. So as we remember Jesus' name today and from where his name came, we can remember ours and how they were given to us. And we can remember that as we are most essentially named as the beloved of God, so too are our brothers and sisters and neighbors around us. We are each beloved in a unique way, in God's eyes, and our real and true identity lies in God's heart. And as God gave the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation, I invite you to take some time today or maybe this week to perhaps let go of some of that chatter in your head or in the world that calls you names that are not helpful or holds you to standards which are not attainable. But I invite you to think and pray about the names that God has for you and has in God's heart. Maybe you know them, and maybe some are yet to be revealed to you. And as you take time to discover them or just rest in them, may you know and feel just how beloved you are and how unique you are in God's eyes. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able, as we say the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. Our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please stand or kneel as you are able. In this season of Christ's birth, we give thanks for the gift of the incarnation and God's presence with us in the manger and in our lives. And Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Andrew, Mary, and Alan, our bishops, Matthew, our bishop-elect, Amanda, our rector, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for our communities, those who live in them, and for those whom we have entrusted to lead. We pray for those serving in the military, and we ask for the courage and grace to stand for justice and peace. We pray for Joseph, our president, and Kathy, our governor, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for our St. Philip's parish. May we, with your help, continue to bless and serve our community and world by living into our mission, especially in this joyful Christmas season. We pray for St. Philip's nursery school, and we pray in thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this week. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for La Iglesia Anglicana de Mexico. And in the Episcopal Future Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the common life and mission of the Diocese of New York. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for Beth Cody, Robert Dickey, Jack Sandland, David Redden, Isabella Sumano, Brian Nice, Henry Atkins, Victor Ruiz, Eddie O'Connell, Judy Dixon, Dave All, Marilyn Jaff Ruiz, Steve Lovell, Kathy Madden, Chris Brown, Edwina Leahy, John Roder, John Aldridge, Doug Logan, Judy, Joey Kelder, Sally Evans, and all those who suffer from gun violence. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died, and for Morton Williams, in whose name the altar flowers have been given. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, God. God's peace. I'll announce you about coffee hour, but I'll announce your name. Yes. Okay. Peace be with you. God's peace. When do you leave for your Africa? Uh, Thursday. Glad to see you. If you're, um, well, all are welcome to come to coffee hour down in the parish house. Just follow the steps to the red door, either red door, and we'll have some goodies and conversation after church. And if you're new or visiting, we welcome you and we're looking forward to meeting you more after the service. Please take a poinsettia home with you today if you would like. Um, I think this is the longest time that we've actually had them in the church because the we had an even song, what, on fourth advent, and then they were here for that, so they're looking okay, but um, <laughs> some of them have already been moved out, but if you would like to take one for your home or someone that you know, please do, and then we'll find other homes for the ones that don't leave today. Um, and speaking of that, um, going forward this year, um, we don't really have anyone who coordinates or plans, I mean, there are some people, but not a committee, like a flower guild, that um, sets up the poinsettias and cares for them and then does the same thing with the um, Easter flowers or any Lent, um, you know, plants that we would like. So if you're interested in that kind of ministry or even leading that kind of ministry, we have some people who've been helping out, but if you'd like, if that's an interest of yours, um, please let me know and we'll put together a little group that can work on that, mostly from Advent through Easter each year. And then... Um, more about the church. We, the, you may know that the worship committee has been talking about the freestanding altar. Last year at this time, we had the freestanding altar out here. It was too big for this space. At eight o'clock, we have a freestanding table that we use, but in the coming weeks and months, we're gonna be trying out a bigger table than we use at eight o'clock, but something smaller than we've been using last year. Um, we'll have it in different locations for eventually making a table of that size. We're just gonna use a temporary table now um, but we're going to try it out for communion, let us know how you feel it works, where is a good place to have it, um, and then we won't use it every Sunday. We'll still use the high altar, but on occasions that we would like the smaller freestanding altar, we can bring it out and use that. So in the coming weeks, you may see a table out here or behind me, um, and we'll try it out and see, see how, it, how it feels, and let me know what you think. What other announcements do we have this morning? What's that? Next Sunday. Next Sunday. The youth, the Epiphany. Yes. Um, children's Chapel Epiphany and event and potluck next week. So if you have children in Children's Chapel, hopefully you got the email invite. Um, but we'll be talking about Epiphany and having a potluck in the parish house beginning at 4.30 p.m. Others save the dates, which will have more information in the coming weeks. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy 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 Lord, Lord, God of power power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is given for, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. You may be seated. 
And at this time, all are invited to come forward to the altar rail to receive communion or a blessing. If you'd like to receive communion, you can place your hands like this, and a wafer will be placed in your hands. And then when the chalice comes, you may sip from the chalice. If you'd like to receive a blessing instead or refrain from either the bread or the wine, just cross your arms over your chest and you'll receive a blessing. And we also have gluten-free wafers available for those who need them. All are welcome.
you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God and the Christ child, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.